high. This time we try to build an RC both powered by ion engines. The plan is to make two ion engines and attach them to an RC boat. I have tried this several times in the past, but the ion engines or the boat has always gone up in flames. But this time I'm gonna try a different approach. Ion engines are mainly, if not only, used in space because they cannot produce high thrust but have a very high specific impulse, making them very efficient. An ion engine uses ions to produce thrust, making positively charged ions go from the anode to the cathode. The ions are positively charged and attracted to the negative side of the ion engine. In our atmosphere, those ions are pushing air with them and therefore producing an ion wind. That ion wind is what produces the thrust of the engine. In my setup, I use a split wire as lots of anodes and the cathode is a copper pipe. As always, my ion engines are battery powered and I also want to keep them as lightweight as possible. I started off by building the ion engines and the base for those ion engines are arc lighters. I bought some arc lighters online and when they arrived I disassembled them. There are lots of different models but on the inside they are pretty much the same and disassembling them are usually not that hard. One thing to look out for though is not to break the on off button that I managed to break on one of the arc lighters. The hardest part is often to loosen the wires generating that arc but with some pliers and brute force it often works out well. I did build two voltage multipliers to increase the voltage using high voltage diodes and high voltage capacitors. Those are not too hard to find online but they are quite expensive compared to other diodes and capacitors. I connected an RC receiver and two MOSFETs to be able to turn the engines on and off and I soldered the MOSFET to the push button on the arc lighter. It was hard to know where you should solder the wire on the arc lighter, but with some measurements and trial and error it went fine. I connected a small battery to the RC receiver. I also built an RC controller by using an RC transmitter and an Arduino board. I also wrote some code to be able to control the engines. Then I was ready for the first engine test and the engines seemed to work just fine. After that I started mounting everything on this small boat using a glue gun. The plan was to fit everything inside the boat except for the pipes and wires. But then I ran into some problems with arcing between the arc lighters and the electrical components. You see, these ion engines produce very high voltages and that makes sparks jump over quite large gaps. Later in this video you will see that this ruins things even more. So I mounted some parts inside the boat and the voltage multipliers on top of the boat. The distance between the wire and the pipe must be very exact to produce the most thrust. If it starts arcing between the wire and the pipe the thrust is highly reduced and the same thing if the distance is too far between the two. I had a very hard time to get this right and when I had everything right the wire changed its position just because of a small bump to the boat or things like that. I solved this problem by 3D print two small vices which I made even smaller on the computer before printing them. I assembled the vice parts and glued it on the boat and attached the wire to the vice. By doing this I could adjust the wire very exact and the wire stayed in position. Because the engine produces very low thrust, I had to build a test setup that wasn't affected by the wind in the surroundings. So I built a small test setup in my garage using a gutter that I plugged on both ends. I also made some stands for the gutter and I leveled the gutter and then filled it with water. Then I was ready for the first test, but that was a complete failure right away because the boat has a very flat bottom and the voltage multipliers that I mounted on top made the boat very unsteady. So I added some weight to the bottom of the boat and made a second test. The boat drove forward but because of the narrow gutter it was hard to get it up to speed because the only way to steer it is by either using the left or right engine. That resulted in that I could not use both thrusters very often. And also, when the boat hit the side of the gutter it lost speed. Another performance issue was that I discovered that a soldering point has come loose 
because when there are so high voltages, some current can pass through that gap in the loose soldering point anyway. And then I also discovered that sometimes the engines arcs between the voltage multiplier and the gutter. At that point I wished I had bought a gutter made of plastic instead. I fixed the loose soldering points and made some modifications to make the boat more steady. And I raised the water level in the gutter to try to reduce the arcing between the boat and the gutter. At first I was quite pleased to the results, but when I started recording something happened. If you look carefully you can see the smoke. At first I didn't understand what caused it, but I think it was one of the capacitors that broke. I wasn't very pleased with the results and I was out of electrical components, so I ordered new components and four weeks later they arrived. I built two new four-stage multipliers and attached them to the arc lighters. I was not too happy about the first boat I used, so I 3D printed another boat. Then I attached everything to the new boat and was ready for another test. The new boat design was much better. It was a lot steadier and didn't want to capsize all the time like the first boat. This time I managed to get the boat to move a little bit faster. If you have more ideas about this project, please put them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.